At six, a day of drama for Downing Street as the Prime Minister fights off more calls to resign. At a rowdy Prime Minister's questions, Boris Johnson defended his record in office. We have more people uh, in employment, more pe employees on the payroll now than there were before the pandemic began. That is what my staff have been working on in Downing Street. Doesn't the country deserve so much better than this out of touch, out of control, out of ideas and soon to be out of office Prime Minister? Pressure intensified as a Tory MP defected to Labour and a former Cabinet Minister delivered his verdict on Boris Johnson. You have sat there too long for all the good you have done. In the name of God, go. Shut up. Yeah. But as some Tory MPs rally around the Prime Minister tonight, we'll be trying to gauge the level of threat to his premiership. Also on the programme. England's Plan B Covid measures are being dropped completely. Work from home ends today. Face coverings are no longer required from the end of next week. This is a regular customer. And inflation soars to its highest level in almost 30 years, driven by rising food prices and energy bills. And there are warnings of worse to come. And coming up in sport on the BBC News Channel after last night's drama, England prepare to face Australia again in the final of Netball's quad series at London's Copper Box. Good evening from Downing Street on a dramatic day in Westminster as the Prime Minister faced more intense pressure over parties held here during lockdown. For the second week in a row, Boris Johnson heard calls for his resignation at Prime Minister's questions, among them from a former Conservative Cabinet member, David Davis, who said, in the name of God, go. A moments before the Prime Minister stood up in Parliament, one of his own MPs announced he was defecting to Labour. Boris Johnson again apologised for any misjudgments and told the Commons that MPs should wait for the results of an inquiry into the allegations, which is expected next week. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg.